And hello, welcome back. So today we're gonna be doing something a bit different, guys. So we're gonna be looking at the ROIs of different um, layer one smart contract platforms. So we're gonna be taking a look at the price history and we're also gonna be taking a look at uh, their TVLs, okay? The TVL of that specific ecosystem. And we're basically gonna try and assess for ourselves whether or not um, a booming ecosystem, whether or not um, if a specific blockchain has a, a huge increase in TVL, whether or not that means that the, the price of the native token of that blockchain will also appreciate, okay? So let's get right into it, let's go. All right, so what you see here is a comparison of all the different L1s ROIs in 2021, okay? So here on the x-axis, I have time in days. And on the y-axis, rather than having price, I have ROI, okay? Because if I had price, none of this would make sense, okay? Because obviously ETH is like $3,000 and ADA is, what, like $2? Right? These are all different prices, so um, so it makes a lot more sense to use ROI, all right? So you see on the right-hand side, we have ETH in green, ADA in blue, DOT in white, AVAX in red, Solana in purple, BNB in yellow. So let's take a quick look at exactly how well these tokens performed over the past year. So at the start of the year, the first month or so, we had AVAX outperforming the rest, BNB underperforming. And then as the year progressed, you can see here that at that two to three month mark, um, we had AVAX, BNB, Solana, and ADA all around the same ROI, okay? And we had ETH and DOT also at the same ROI. As the year went on, AVAX had a pretty substantial correction, okay? And Solana, ADA, and BNB basically took off, okay? They took the lead and they held onto it till basically right now. So what you'll notice recently though, is this, these, these are the two big moves you'll notice here and here. So you'll notice Solana had a huge run up recently and AVAX had a huge run up recently. And it just happened to be that that was exactly when um, Solana and AVAX each had their TVLs exploding respectively. So whenever this happened, Solana's TVL went up like 10X when this happened, AVAX's TVL also went up like 10, 15 X. So does that mean that the TVL of a specific ecosystem is directly related to uh, the price of that specific uh, blockchain's native token? And honestly, my answer would be no for two specific reasons. So one is Cardano, it's that simple. So what has Cardano been doing over the past year and a half, two years, okay? pretty much nothing right i mean obviously they've been uh they've obviously they've been working but in terms of like actually putting out a product right like you can't actually go deploy a a contract onto cardano well maybe now you can okay but like at, at that point a few months ago you couldn't okay and that's when we saw the huge run-up in price right like i just showed you guys right here ada is like number two or number three in terms of roi okay only solana and maybe bnb uh, outperformed it in this time period and what did what did uh, Cardano have like on its blockchain did it have any DEXs did it have any lending platform it had nothing there's nothing going on so why did ADA do so well basically just because people speculate on it it's it's that simple and I think these like these other layer ones less people were aware of them okay and and whenever the TVL starts growing obviously that that brings a lot more eyes to that ecosystem right whenever you have new dApps and uh, like new ideas being built specifically on that ecosystem, it just brings a whole lot more eyes to it, right? So while I do think that it's good for an ecosystem to have a high TVL, obviously, um, I don't think that that specifically means that the, uh, the native token for that blockchain is gonna do very well. I honestly just think that um, as the TVL grows, awareness of that blockchain grows, right? Like back here, over here, let's like over here, I'm not sure that many people knew what Avalanche was or knew of the tech of it, right? So, I mean, it, it just comes down to awareness at the end of the day, right? Like people become aware of specific things at different times and they start aping in once they understand what it is. So like, for example, this is the best example I can give. If you were, um, if you were around whenever ETH was first launched, whenever Ethereum was first launched, 
and you understood tech, like you fully understood what Ethereum was, like you had a computer science degree or something to where you fully understood what uh, what Ethereum was, right? Like you weren't just like, okay, yeah, I get it. No, no, like you fully understood it. If that was the case, then I bet at that time you would have been like, okay, like this is some crazy technology. I'm going to at least put a couple thousand in, right? So there are people that basically found out what you found out all the way back then years ago. There are people that found that out this year in like April of 2021, okay? And honestly, this is a very, um, a very underappreciated aspect of like of crypto and price prediction in general is understanding the tech because yeah, I guess you can, you can separate fundamentals and technicals completely, but they do kind of play into each other. Like if you fully understand the technology of something and you fully understand what, uh, what like the goal of this protocol is then you can make a, an educated guess on, okay, like, is this actually going to be used in the future? Like, does this actually have a use case or is this, um, is this team just trying to make a quick buck? Right? So that, that is a very underappreciated aspect of it. Okay. Because like I just said, if you understood Ethereum back then, you would have known that, okay, like this is crazy. Like what they want to have, uh, have a way to actually like code on the blockchain to program like full functioning logic on the blockchain like if you understood that back then you would have been ahead of the curve right but yeah basically that's that's what i think um plays more of a role than the actual tvl i think the awareness i think awareness of that ecosystem of that blockchain of its tech is what makes the price go up like crazy okay and i mean it's fair to to look at dot uh, all the way down here and be like, okay, the reason why Dot hasn't performed really well is because there's not much going on on Polkadot right now, right? Like all these other ecosystems have dApps, have uh, have a bunch of different like DEXs, lending platforms, all the stuff going on, right? Polkadot doesn't have a single parachain up yet, okay? And I mean, I know it's coming by the end of the year or that's like apparently when it's supposed to be coming or when the parachain auction is supposed to start. But I mean, how many people are aware of that? Like how many people even know what a parachain is? So it makes sense that that dot has underperformed. Okay. But like I said, once uh, the parachain slot auction begins and like we actually have parachains, then people are actually like, Oh wait, what is this? What's polka dot? What's this? And they actually understand the tech. Then they're going to be like, okay, <laughs> it's time to ape in, you know? But that'll probably happen after there's already an ecosystem built, okay? Alrighty, with that being said, that is about all I have for you guys today. If you liked the video, make sure to like the video. If you're new around here, don't know who I am, but enjoyed this type of content, make sure to subscribe, okay? Because I post content like this like three to four times a week, okay? Catch you in the next one.